Hi guys, Chris Kuhn here with 3D Performance Tech, and today we're going to take a look at flat plane crankshafts. The flat plane crankshaft is hardly new technology. It goes all the way back to the beginning of the automotive industry, mostly because it was simpler to manufacture. In modern times, the flat plane crank is frequently found on Italian exotics and race cars, and has recently gained attention in the United States due to its use in the new Shelby GT350. Here you can see the flat plane crank in the upper left, compared to the more traditional cross plane crank in the lower right. A flat plane crankshaft gets its name from the way it looks. As you can see here in this picture, the crank pin journals circled in red are 180 degrees out of phase from each other, so you could cut right through those center points using a two-dimensional plane, hence the name flat plane crank. By contrast, a cross plane crank has its crank pin journals every 90 degrees, so you'd need two two-dimensional planes that were perpendicular to each other in order to cross through those center points, hence the name cross plane crank. Like most technologies, flat plane cranks have some upsides and some downsides. Benefits include higher RPM, better tuning efficiency, weight, and sound. Downsides include higher NVH, or noise vibration and harshness, and, at least traditionally, reduced engine life. A lot of the benefits of the flat plane crank come from the engine's firing order. You can see on the right, the engine with the flat plane crank fires evenly between both banks of cylinders, left, right, left, right, and so on. The engine on the left doesn't do this, however. You can see there are points where one cylinder fires and then another one does on the same bank. If you take a look at a flat plane V8 in operation, it's easy to see why this is. A flat plane V8 is essentially two inline four cylinder engines that have been joined at the crankshaft. Given this configuration, it's very easy to go back and forth between each cylinder bank. By contrast, it's impossible to do it with a cross plane crankshaft. No matter what firing order you try to use, you're not going to be able to go back and forth evenly between cylinder banks. So now we know that a flat plane V8 fires evenly. In order to understand why this is an advantage, let's take a look at two lanes of traffic merging together. Ideally, each driver would let one person go ahead of them, forming a perfect zipper effect. In the real world, however, we all know that's not the case. There's always somebody that refuses to let anybody go in front of them, which leads to angry drivers, lots of honking, and a general reduction in efficiency. When we look at the exhaust pulses coming out of each cylinder on this flat plane crank engine, you can see that they're timed almost perfectly, each pulse coming down the header to create a small vacuum behind it. This vacuum in turn helps to suck the exhaust out of the next cylinder, in an effect known as scavenging. Looking at the cross plane crank engine, however, you can see that some pulses, shown in red, intersect with other pulses, shown in orange. This has a negative effect on the scavenging, and generally makes it more difficult for the engine to breathe, particularly at high RPM. As engine speeds increase, this breathing efficiency becomes more and more important, which is one of the reasons why flat plane V8s tend to rev significantly higher than their cross plane counterparts. It's not the only reason, however. One of the other benefits of an even firing order is that all cylinders behave the same. With a traditional cross plane V8, you'll have some cylinders that underperform others. When you do performance tuning, that is fuel ignition and possibly valve timing curves, you have to play to the lowest common denominator. And while 6 out of 8 cylinders may very well be able to handle a more aggressive tune, you have to tone it down to account for the ones that can't. Having an even firing order with a flat plane V8 solves that problem. So now that we've looked at some of the advantages of a flat plane crank, let's look at some of the downsides. The biggest one is NVH, or noise, vibration, and harshness. Technically, the reason that you have extra vibration in a flat plane crank is due to secondary imbalance, or an issue with the secondary balancing of the engine. But even just looking at these two drawings, it should be obvious that the cross plane engine on the left is going to run smoother than the flat plane engine on the right. Having cylinders fire at every 90 degrees instead of every 180 degrees just makes for a smoother overall engine cycle. The roughness and vibration associated with flat plane cranks increases in severity as the displacement of the engine rises. In other words, the bigger the engine, the more likely you are to have issues. Here's Ford engineer Jamel Hamidi talking about this issue on an episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Why haven't more companies done the flat plane crank? Is it more expensive to do? For one thing, uh, flat plane crank engines have always been done with smaller displacement V8s, right. and uh, the vast majority of American V8s are larger displacement, right. and uh, that that technology, I think, before this engine came out, uh, those two parameters of an engine were mutually exclusive. So those are the major benefits and downsides of engines with flat plane cranks. The only things we didn't talk about are weight and sound over there on the benefits. Typically, a flat plane crankshaft will require smaller counterweights, which reduces the overall weight of the crankshaft and allows for quicker revving. And as far as sound goes, the evenly spaced firing produces a sound that's significantly different from your average American V8. Personally, I think it's pretty cool. 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and please check back for more videos here at 3D Performance Tech.